So today I'll go through an example of a false proof by induction, which is just some little syllabus dot point that somehow may happen to sneak into your syllabus anyway. So recall that when you're performing an induction problem, you need to have two main ingredients. On one hand, you need to have a valid base case. And on the other hand, you need to have some inductive step that is compatible with your base case. The instant you lack any one of the following, your entire proof pretty much breaks down and ultimately you haven't really proven anything. So I'll go through my example. So what you'll see here is that I have a statement and that's the sum of the first 10 integers is allegedly equal to a half n minus one n plus two, which I know it's not equal to. But what I'll do is I'm gonna try doing induction and what I'll do is I'm gonna basically make my assumptions. I'm gonna start doing my inductive step. I'll assume the statement is true when n's equal to k and for convenience, I'll also restate what it is I'm trying to prove, i.e. when n's equal to k plus one. And then I'll go through my working out. So I'll see on the left, I have that expression, which I see, oh, well then I can just sub my assumption in straight away. So I'll go ahead and do that as well. And then I'll use my clever factorization technique where I pull the one half out in front because I see there's a half out here in what I'm trying to prove. So you may want to pause the video to digest that, but trust me, that's perfectly valid. And then I'll do a fair bit of rearranging, expanding and factorizing and whatnot. And it turns out by some miracle, I actually do get to what it is that I was trying to prove to begin with. So when you look at this, you'll see that, oh, it looks like I actually have a very valid inductive step. But here is the problem. For example, if I sum n is equal to one, I'll get on the left, I'll get one. And on the right, I will get zero. Well, obviously that's not true. I can then sub in n is equal to two. And on the left, I'll now get one plus two, which is three. And then on the right, I will get a half times two minus one times two plus two, which is hopefully equal to two, but that's obviously still not true. And the idea is that no matter what value of n I sub, for example, three, four, a hundred, or a million, or whatever it is, if I try subbing that value in, I will never have a statement that is true regardless. So ultimately, I do not have a base case no matter how far out I go. And that's basically the hint to me that I've basically done a false proof by induction and I've pretty much not proven anything at all at the end of the day. Thanks for watching, everyone.